Hi, I am Beth from My Tutoring Bee, and today we are going to be talking about how to complete the square using algebra tiles. So my goal in this video is to just give you a little bit of an introduction into how the algebra tiles work for the purposes of completing the square. Now that being said, the problems that we're going to solve today are actually problems that I have previously solved in another video using the standard factorization method. So if you want to watch that video, please feel free. I linked it down in the description below. So take a look at that. That will give you an idea of how we factorize these using the standard method. This video is going to be all about those same problems using algebra tiles. So let's get started. We're going to start with this expression that is a perfect square. And I want to start with this to show you sort of the goal of these algebra tiles as we are completing the square. And I want you to see that with our algebra tiles, we are actually trying to create a square using the tiles. So let's actually look at it to see exactly what that looks like. So I've got my algebra tiles over here. And by the way, I am using, here's my URL right here. It's mathspot.com. And then it, there are algebra tiles. I'll actually link that in the description below too. So you can use these exact algebra tiles. But here we have an X squared, uh, two positive X's that are in different orientations, just one going vertically and one going horizontally. And then we have negative X, and then we have both a positive and negative one. So these are going to represent our integers, and then our X tiles are going to represent our X terms, and our X squared is, of course, going to represent our X squared terms. So let's go ahead and set this up, set this expression up, X squared minus 8X plus 16. So first I'm just going to drag some tiles out here, and as you can see, as I drag these tiles, this is sort of like the pool of tiles that I have to pull from. Um, and so we've got one X squared, and then we've got negative eight X. So that means I need eight of these. Another way to use these is, as you can see, I have this purple box around it, so this tile is highlighted. And then I can use these arrow, arrows to just duplicate those X's. So I need to make eight of those. There we go, so now I have eight. And then we've got plus 16. So that means that I'm going to go ahead and drag over a positive one and I need 16 of those. So I'm just going to try to make those really quickly. There we go. Okay, so we've got 16 positive ones. We've got eight negative X's and we've got an X squared. So like I said, remember this is a perfect square trinomial. So what that means is I can arrange these tiles so that they create a perfect square. So you'll see as I arrange these, I'm just using this rotate button to uh, create these vertical negative X tiles. And I'm just splitting them up. As you can see, I'm putting one on the bottom and one on the side because I want to split these up and you can start to see the shape of a square starting to form here. So you might already be able to tell just because of how I had these positive ones uh, arranged over here that these are going to fill in this space pretty perfectly and create this entire this entire thing will eventually be a perfect square so we're talking about a literal two-dimensional square here and there we go there's our last piece all right so now we've got our perfect square so now that I've arranged these let me kind of explain why I have arranged them this way and how this is going to help us complete the square in our next examples so when we're talking about this arrangement of our tiles what we want to keep in mind is what length and width would we multiply together to get this square as a product, as the answer when we multiply that length and width. So right here, this x squared, we would need to multiply x times x in order to get x squared, right? So x and x, we multiply those together to get x squared. So then what would we have to multiply times x to get negative x. That would have to be a negative 1, right? So x times negative 1 would give us negative x. And then we could say the same thing going down this way. This x times this negative 1 would give us negative x. And we can repeat that process all the way down the side here. 
and all the way across the top. So now let's not, let's not forget about our positive one tiles that we see right here. Does that work for this multiplication process? Well, a negative one times a negative one gives us a positive one. You can almost think about this, I don't know if you remember doing these like in elementary school when you were first learning your multiplication tables and you would have that chart where you'd have like zero through 12 across the top and then zero through 12 across the side and you would fill in all of the products in the middle. That's the same, the same line of thinking here. We just have some value across the top and some value across the side. And when we multiply those together in a grid like fashion, what is that product? What do we get in that space that's in between? Okay, so I've just pasted this in here so that into my whiteboard area so that I can actually write on this. So what is it that we have here along the top and the sides exactly? Well, we have an X and neg four negative ones. So this can be written as, oops, I definitely need a different color for that. Let me get this white, X minus four, right? And then we can say the same thing for over here on the side. We've got x minus 4, because here we have that x, and then we've got four negative ones. And we wanted to arrange it in this way because we want it to be as close to a perfect square as possible. I wanted to arrange these in a way where it was even going across the top uh, as well as going down the side. So we've got x minus 4 here, x minus 4 here, so we could write that as x minus 4 times x minus 4, or to simplify that, we could write x minus 4 squared. So let's go to this problem. This is, again, I've already solved this in that other video, so please check that out if you haven't already. But we're going to take this equation and show how to complete the square using the algebra tiles. So let's go ahead and get that set up. I'm going to clear off my workspace here. We are going to start with an x squared. So I'm going to drag over x squared. We need six positive x's. So I'm going to, it doesn't matter which of these I take. They, they both mean the same thing. You can rotate them to be either vertical or horizontal. So I'm just going to um, make sure that I have six total. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then we need eight positive ones. So we've got four, eight, there we go. All right, so now my task is still the same as it was in the previous example. Uh, I'm going to try to arrange these to create a perfect square. So I always try to just alternate putting one on the side and one underneath until I get them all divvied out. And again, we are trying to think just what would multiply. So when I put these pieces out here, these are not part of the equation. This is just what my factors would be in order to multiply to give me this product that we see here in the center. So I'm just trying to keep that length and width in mind as I'm arranging these. So now I need to go ahead and arrange my positive one tile. So I'm going to arrange those in the same way across the top and then down the side as evenly as possible. However, this is not a perfect square trinomial like the last one was. We need to complete the square. So we know that here along the sides and along the top, we would need there we go, we would need ones x plus looks like three ones across both the top and the side in order to create this product inside here. And again, you can, you can verify that x times x would give us this x squared here. x times positive one would give us this positive x. Same with down here on the side, one times x would give us positive x. And then with our constant terms, one times one would give us the one all the way through here. But we're missing a piece, right? Let's go ahead and paste this in here so that we can actually work on it and start to write on it. So what do we need here? Well, we need another positive one, right? Or another way to say that is that we are missing one, right? So when we write out our factors of x plus three times x plus three, that's 
almost true. We have x plus 3 squared, but we are missing a positive 1 that belongs right there. So this would give us the perfect square that we want it to be. However, in order to write it more accurately, we would write it as x plus 3 squared minus 1. And now we can set this equal to 0 and go ahead and solve from here. So we would want to add 1 to both sides. So now we're just using algebra to solve for x. And then we have x plus 3 squared equals 1. So we would want to take the square root of this side so that we're, remember, we're trying to get that x by itself, isolate the x. So we need to take the square root of the other side as well. So that leaves us with x plus 3 over here, and that equals, well, the square root of 1 could be positive 1 or it could be negative 1. And I talked about that in my previous video as well as to why it is a both positive or negative 1. Positive 1 times positive 1 does give us positive 1 as a product, and also negative 1 times negative 1 gives us a positive 1 as a product. So when we write this, we're writing it plus or minus 1. That symbol tells us that this one could be positive or it could be negative. So it's at this point when we need to separate this out into two different equations and solve. So let me move this over, give myself a little bit more room here. So I need x plus 3 equals positive 1 or x plus 3 equals negative 1. And now I can solve. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I'm just going to start with this equation. It doesn't matter which one you start with. So our 3's cancel out, and then x equals 1 minus 3 gives me negative 2. And then here, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. x equals negative 1 minus 3 gives me a negative 4. All right. So there we go. We have just completed the square, and those are our two values of x that would satisfy this equation. All right, let's try one more example. Here we're going to do x squared minus 12x plus 11 equals 0. Again, I have solved this using standard factorization. Let's take a look at what it would look like with the algebra tiles. So we're going to start with an x squared. So we need 12 negative x's. So let's just go ahead and pull one out here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I just like to put them side by side like that. Just it helps me count them a little bit easier and I'm not going to run out of room on my page. And then we need 11 positive ones. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There we go. So almost 12, but just 11. And then again, I'm just going to go ahead and speed this process up. Uh, while I'm arranging all of these into as close to a perfect square as possible. Okay, there we go. So let me adjust this guy right here. So as we can see, we can start to see that square shape, but obviously we've got this uh, big chunk here missing. That's okay. We're going to figure out what we would need if we could fill in these places, what would complete the square? Well, we're missing one, two, three, four, five. We're missing five across, and we're missing one, two, three, four, five, so five down. We're missing five, a five by five section, which is 25 pieces, right? So let's go ahead and arrange our length and width. So I always like to start with my x squared, and I'm factoring that into x times x. And then here, what would give me a negative x here times x? Well, that would be negative 1. And then same thing here, negative 1 times x gives me x. And then that works for my whole numbers as well. So we've got negative 1 times negative 1 gives me positive 1 here. So let's just go ahead and fill this out as if it were a perfect square and find out what we are missing. Well, we, are, we already found out, oops, I ran out of negative one, so I'm just going to repeat them there. There we go. There's only so many in the, the stack over here, the pool. So we would have x minus six, right? We have six negatives here times x minus six. We can 
I'm a little off right here. There we go. So, all right, I went ahead and moved it over here so that we can write on it. So again, in this section right here, we are missing 25 pieces. So I'm just gonna write 25 there to signify that that's what we would need to make this a perfect square. And we've got x minus six on this side and x minus six going across the top. So now we're ready to write our equation. We've got x minus 6 squared, right? x minus 6 times itself minus 25. This represents what we have here in our picture. And now we can complete this by setting it equal to 0 and solving for x. So we're going to start off by adding 25 to both sides. And we get x minus 6 squared equals 25. And then we need to find the square root of both sides. So we get x minus 6 equals plus or minus. What's the square root of 25? That would be 5 times 5, right? So plus or minus 5. And then this is where we would need to split it up into those two separate equations to solve for x. x minus 6 equals positive 5 or x minus 6 equals negative 5. We're going to add 6 to both sides. x equals 5 plus 6 is 11. We're going to add 6 to both sides. x equals negative 5 plus 6 gives us positive 1. So those are our two solutions for x. I hope that this video was helpful for you to get a little bit of a sense of how the algebra tiles work when completing the square. Again, if you would like to watch my other videos, I have them linked down below. I also have some other resources that are linked below. If you are a teacher or a parent or a student, there's something there for everybody, so please check it out. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks so much.